Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in and coming back and all that good stuff. And today I've got a little video about Luminar. I'm going to call it a quick tip. I'm going to try to make the video kind of fast, but I got a lot to talk about. So let me jump into the photo and here we go. I'm in Luminar. This is a single exposure shot at f13. And you know what? Uh, Luminar doesn't tell you the exposure time, and I really wish it did because I don't remember. Um, but it's a few seconds, right? This is probably like three to four seconds. I was in the woods. Uh, this was in Montana and it was pretty dark, so I'm guessing it was five, maybe even up to seven or eight seconds, something like that at F13. Tight aperture, because what I wanted was that flowing water, which I think I captured well, and I like the scene, but here's what I turned it into, and while that might look like a major difference, here's the before again, and here's the after, it's really just a few filters, and it's a couple little things I wanna talk about, so let's jump into it. Okay, so in this video, I'm talking about how less is more. I have a tendency, to stick a lot of filters on photos. And admittedly, it's just fun as hell. Um, you can do so much and I love it, especially with cityscapes because I shoot those a lot. And there's always these you know, odd light color. Well, they're not odd, I mean, they're normal for cities, but they're kind of ugly, like these yellow, kind of sometimes orange, sometimes even kind of greenish glow. I don't like that stuff. So I'm always doing color balance and split toning and things like that to basically shift the colors into what I want, where uh, as opposed to you know what I was given. Um, in nature though, especially scenes like this one, to me less is more, and that's what I'm talking about. Because uh, you know nature, you don't have to deal with all the city lights that are shining on you, of course. And if you get a scene like this where the natural beauty of it to me is fairly obvious, unlike in cityscapes, sometimes you're kind of like, well, it's a city, you know, I, it, a lot of people live in cities, probably most of you, and so you're like, I've seen street corners like that all the time. That's not that great. So, you know, I've moved colors around to make it more interesting to suit my mood, but I don't want to get that, um, I'll call it creative, uh, but I don't want to get that creative in a landscape shot like this or a flowing stream. Simple shot, straightforward. It's clear that you're in the woods somewhere and you got a beautiful scene. So I don't want to make it unnatural. So I'm going to show you what I did. Um, first thing I did is hop into the de develop filter. And it, let me show you the before again. There it is. Um, kind of blue in the water, gray, really, if you look at it. And I don't like that, so I wanted to bring back some of that. And also, the, the entire photo is kind of blue. Again, it was wood. It was all wooded over me and around me, so it's pretty dark. So that often comes out kind of blue. So I took the temperature and the tint both to the right, just to give it a little bit of warmth. Uh, contrast, I took the highlights down, believe it or not, and that's because I'm gonna do some stuff later that's gonna sort of pop that, uh, sort of that white. But um, I did bring the whites up significantly at 50. So again, went from that to that. One of the reasons I brought the highlights down and it'll become more obvious in future filters that I get to is I've got a spot here that's pretty hot, kind of what you call a, an area of like hot pixels, right? I don't want them to be blown. They're not blown, but you can get there quickly if you're not careful. So that's one reason I keep the highlights down a little bit. Um, and then I uh, took the shadows down because I'm kind of darkening the background, those trees. It's obvious that there's bushes and trees and you're in the woods. I don't really care for my viewer to be staring at that. I want you to look at the pathway of the water and it flowing around the rocks and under that tree that's crossing the stream. So I was kind of done with the adjust tab in develop, but what I hadn't done yet is the lens uh, correction tab. And I went all the way to 100. Let me show you the before, right? So there it is. Two, th three things actually I want you to look at. Look at the stick, uh, tree really going across the stream. It's pretty straight, right? This tree here is perfectly straight. And I, I used this uh, other uh, stump, I guess it was. Um, it's in this corner. It's kind of an anchoring element for that, that corner. So, you know, it helps shepherd your eye through the frame, I think. But if you look at those three, what I did with lens distortion is I went all the way to 100. And now look at the difference, right? Number one, the bump on the edge of this stump is much more pronounced. Take a look, right? Before and after. Now, if you didn't know that I moved it, you wouldn't be able to tell. And um, I actually like it better this way because that bump on the end of the stump, I'm making these <laughs> like a Dr. Seuss rhyme, uh, but the bump on the stump is sticking out further. Okay, so that bump on the stump is sticking out further. There's the before and after, and I like it now. It actually points into the stream, right into that channel, which is kind of the main one in the center of the frame. So again, from there to there, the exaggerated effect of lens correction accentuates that to me. The second thing it does is if you look at the tree going across the stream, now it kind of bows a little bit. 
And to me, that's natural because I see that and I think, hey, somebody's been walking across that. And it's not a huge uh, tree. You know, it might be eight inches around or something. I'm not sure. But hey, if you walk on it enough, it's very likely to bow. So I, I think that actually works fine. Um, and you wouldn't know. So again, uh, you know, I'm exaggerating the effects, but I'm the only one that knows. Well, and of course, now the world knows because I'm putting it on YouTube. But hey, um, but the last one is that tree in the upper right corner. If you look at that, it's very straight in the original frame. And now it's way off to the right. It's literally bowing out of uh, the frame. But I don't really care. Um, if you didn't know that, you wouldn't be able to tell that you know, that might just look like part of another tree trunk. So I think I got away with it. You know, because you can see this before, but the after, I think all of that lens correction, even though it exaggerated the stuff, uh, actually um, works. So that's what I did. Next was image radiance. And this was just to add a little bit of shadow. It does brighten the highlights a little bit. And I warmed it up and added some saturation. So I went from that to that. I think it gets a little bit more dreamy and I'm pretty much into the dreamy stuff when I get into a forest scene like this. I want to crank up, a, you know, I want to I want to have more shadow. I don't want to see all the way through it. I like to add that in. It adds a little bit of that romantic glow and I don't know, I just like it. Um, next was dodge and burn. And so if you look here, what I hit was I hit this stump in the, in the corner. I hit this big rock right here and then I hit this rock here. Now this rock here in the center of the stream it's wet because the water's been going over it and it's kind of shiny. But with dodge and burn, I was able to bring that up a little bit more. So one more time, look at that rock, the other rock, and the stump. That's before and after. Just brighten those and that actually brought them closer to what they look like in the original. Next was a little bit of color work. So I added golden hour, which you may not think to add golden hour if you're buried in a forest, but it brings up some of those warmer tones on that stump, the rock, the tree, and that far left side of the stream where it's a little bit shallower and you can see the stream bed. I think that brings it up a little bit, adds a little bit of warmth. So there's the before and the after and I like that um, quite a bit. Then split toning and so here is where I just used the highlights and what I wanted to do is bring back a little bit of that green blue in the highlights which is the water. So let me show you the before, kind of lost there um, and after, accentuated just a little bit. So you can see the water before was kind of blue, but it was more of a faded kind of overall blue look in the whole uh, stream. Whereas now I got some blue just in these deeper areas where the water is kind of in motion in this bottom sort of third or uh, half of the frame. I think it works for me. And then the final filter was soft glow. And that was simply because I like it. Um, I use soft glow a lot in cityscapes because it'll take lights and any source of light and just give it a little bit of pop, a little bit of glow. But you can use it on landscapes too. And not just with like with moon or stars or sun or whatever, but things like this because that water is um, is pretty white. And so it operates in terms of uh, the way it uh, uses the filter, or the filter uses that, um, just like a street light, right? It's a pop of bright uh, brightness and it just gives it a little bit of glow. So one more time, there's the before, especially in that bottom section of the water and the after. It just gives it a little oomph, a little bit more white. And this is where I went back and I was managing the highlights here because let me turn on hot and cold pixels. If you aren't aware of hot and cold pixels, you can turn on these little triangles in your histogram and the blue is the shadows, that's the cold pixels, right? So this is basically where it's really dark. So you can look there and that's effectively almost absolute black, right? Again, I don't really care. It's black right here around this uh, rock in the stream, but that's what, uh, that's cold pixels, if you will. And then the hot pixels, before and after, you can't see any and that's because there aren't any. Let me show you the difference. If I take the whites from 50 to 100, you can see I'm gonna get blown out whites there. And so those are gonna be hot pixels. And so I think it's around 60 where it starts to get under control. And so you can actually do this with your photos. Turn on hot and cold pixels and then move these sliders that may be affecting those. It could be your shadows uh, and blacks or your highlights and whites. Move them around and right there, I'm at 66 and I'm basically, I see one tiny little bit, you would never even notice that. Um, but when I start increasing those, you can see where that's where it's, my photo is getting blown out. So I was happy, I think around 60 or 55. I don't remember what I had exactly, but let's go with 55. But that's a little tip with the histogram that comes in handy. I'm gonna go ahead and close that, but it's a great way to manage your hot and cold pixels or really uh, you know, bright or dark parts of an image. Uh, and that's uh, a quick tip. I don't know how quick it is, but um, 
you know, less is more. You don't have to have a whole lot of filters. I stuck a few on here that I really wanted. Uh, some of it was color work, like split toning and golden hour. Soft glow is just a final sort of coup de gras, just a little touch. Um, and golden hour, dodge and burn, things like that was just, just getting it where I wanted it. And let me show you one more time the before and after. Note the difference in the tree there, especially in the center. You can see it's really kind of bowing. Um, and the water, I think, just looks gorgeous. And one more time, here's the before and the after. And that's it, that's a quick tip. Less is more. You don't have to have a ton of filters to get the look that you want. And don't hesitate to experiment with uh, the various sliders as well as like the lens correction and scenes like this. And don't forget about hot and cold pixels. They come in really handy uh, when you're managing a scene with really bright or dark spots. That's it, my friends. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. Like the video, share with your friends. Don't forget to uh, subscribe. And leave a comment. Let me know what you think about it. I'll be back soon with more videos. Have a great one, my friends. Take care and adios.